Hi, and thanks for joining us online. We're grateful for the opportunity to tell you more about Long Branch Covenant Church, and hopefully we'll have the opportunity to meet you in person at some point. Whether you're a member here at the church or just another follower of Jesus Christ, or perhaps you're someone who's interested in finding out more about Christianity and the things that Jesus said and who he really is, well, we're hoping to be able to help you do that because there's three things that we want to help you do. We want to help you connect. First of all, connect to God. Jesus is the source of all life and goodness. And if you can connect to him, it'll change your whole life. We want to also help you connect to other people because community was God's idea and we're supposed to journey through life together, not on our own. Secondly, we want to help you grow. We want you to grow as a whole person, not just in your faith, but in your faith, we want you to have a dynamic relationship with God and then again, be able to grow together with other people and join other people on the journey of faith. And finally, we want to find ways to help you invest your life to be part of something bigger than yourself. We all know deep down inside that that's really what we're meant to be. We're not supposed to be going it alone. We're supposed to be part of bigger, something bigger and ultimately be able to make an impact on our communities, on our families, people we work with, our cities and towns, even our nation. And that happens when we invest our lives in that. We do hope that you'll be encouraged by today's sermon but first, here's some information on some other upcoming events at the church. Although the pandemic has limited some of our activities, there are still ways to connect, grow, and invest at Long Branch Covenant Church. We host breakfasts for women and men on the second and fourth Saturday mornings each month. You can sign up at lbcovenant.org slash welcome slash upcoming dash events. Also, check out our life groups, a great way to meet and to get to know us better. Most of them meet on Zoom a couple times a month. And of course, visit our website or call the office at 732-870-2028 to get info or ask for prayer. We'd love to help you in any way we are able. Now, here's today's sermon. Uh, just to uh, reiterate, if you got here a little late, um, the state has re uh, uh, um, said you don't have to wear a mask anymore. <laughs> and you don't have to physically distance. But um, we do want to be sure that we are uh, respectful of people who are more cautious. Uh, and um, so if someone's wearing a mask, you know, make sure you greet them with some respect and make sure you find out what their comfort level is. Um, because that's what the scripture tells us to do, to honor all men. Also, um, I meant to say something earlier, uh, it was such a busy day with so many things to do, um, but I, 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 from all of us in leadership to all of you and your families, uh, anyone who, who's, who has served in the military, or perhaps you have a relative who gave his or her life in service to the country, uh, this is a weekend that we should thank you, and we do thank you for your service. Uh, we, um, it's only been in recent years, for instance, my pastor Ray served in Vietnam, and it's only been in recent years that I, you know, he's, he and I have talked, and I've understood more of the impact of that experience upon his life, and have such a greater respect for him for that. Uh, and we, we all, if, you, if you're in my generation, many of us, never served in the military, and that's more and more uh, as the days uh, go further on. And we need to make sure we take time to reflect on the sacrifices of others and uh, thank them for that. So if you know somebody who's, uh, whose family member has given their life for, the con for our country in service to the country, make sure you give them a call this weekend and say, hey, thank you for what your family sacrifice for our freedom. Amen. And I'm sure there's, uh, there's uh, uh, events going on around the different towns uh, also honoring that. Well, it's, it's, it's an interesting day, a special day. Um, it's one of those days where uh, in my final preparation of my sermon, uh, I realized how much I needed to hear this, this sermon, you know. <laughs> 
Sometimes you don't realize it, you're just preparing it, you know what you want to say, and as you're reviewing it or working on it, you say, boy, I really need to hear this. And uh, um, so I'm encouraged because I went through it all this, uh, again this morning. I'm encouraged uh, with, you know, receiving Diane, what an example she is to us as, as the words and the uh, encouragement came to her. Uh, Diane indeed has proven herself faithful in overcoming difficult challenges in her life and has proven that she's willing to give uh, whatever she can to the kingdom. And Diane is one of us because that's the nature of Long Branch Covenant Church that we are people that have, have given ourselves to the purposes of the kingdom. And, and many of us have, have gotten here through many difficult challenges. But we have been determined to stay faithful. And what I want to talk to you about this morning is... is um, oh, I don't have my thing, I'll have to use this. I want to talk about wisdom for the journey as we continue on following the Lord. Now, if you're a guest with us today, uh, I believe Chris and Trudy are here with were they there? They are right there. Nice to see you guys back in town. Bob and Patty are here. Good to have you with us. Uh, uh, Diane's sister and brother-in-law. Uh, so I'm going to be talking about the, our journey as a church, but what, what you realize is that the nature of a journey is very personal too. Um, uh, and for us, it's a journey of faith. Um, the thing about a journey of faith is, is you're going somewhere. That's why they call it following Jesus, not just believing in Jesus. Jesus called, calls us to believe in him, but he tells us to follow him. And so we, we constantly talk here at LBCC about the journey of faith, that together we're serving the Lord, we're going somewhere as he leads us. And the journey of faith is, is simple, simple, actually, in many ways. Uh, he rescues us, he changes us, and then he uses us. And sometimes he's doing all of that at once, isn't he? Um, he works outside, as we've heard recently. He tends to work outside of our comfort zone. And so usually when a person becomes a Christian, it's wrestling in a very difficult place. Uh, I was in like the most pressure cooker place in my life when I, when I, I realized it was Jesus cornering me, not my circumstances. And, and he, so he rescued me from my own folly, and he began to change me. But he wants to continue to change me, just like he wants to continue to change you. And so he pushes you outside of your comfort zone. He calls you to things that to follow him, you'll have to move outside your comfort zone. And he wants to continue to change us because he wants to continue to use us. He wants to continue to use your life. Now, Diane is retired now, so instead of saying, okay, I'm just going to sit back and relax, she says, what can I do for the kingdom of God? And she's, she's working as hard now as when she was at a regular job, though she starts a little later in the morning, I understand. <laughs> Good for you, Diane. Good for you. And as the commercial says, what time you got up early? Nobody cares. <laughs> I love that one. The thing about a journey, though, it, whether it's personal or together as a church, if you've been on any kind of journey, uh, you, we've all gotten stuck. We've all, at one time or another, broken down on a journey. And, and though uh, men, we hate to admit it, we, we've gotten lost on journeys <laughs> or lost our bearings. Where are we now? You go to rural South Carolina, I don't care what GPS you have, you'll get lost. Well, so whether it's individually or as a spiritual family journeying, uh, getting stuck, getting broken down, losing your bearings is, is part of the journey. And sometimes when that happens, you realize that's what God's been waiting for to show you something new. Um, and as a church, we are d determined to follow him. Again, let me use Diane as an example. She's decided she's going to follow Jesus, and this is the next chapter of her life in following and serving him. And she's, she's shown us, uh, the elders and deacons, uh, uh, she's shown us that determination. So this morning, I want to talk about wisdom for the journey. Because the journey we're on, we need wisdom for. Uh, there, there's so many opportunities, so many different ways we could do things 
so many uh, things that we could uh, try this or try that. And we need God's wisdom for that. We need to find out what God is saying to us and how we should do it, uh, and, then, and then just obey him. And the great thing about finding wisdom from God is, you know, it's actually relatively simple. It, it, according to scripture, it's surprisingly simple. Now, when I'm having trouble finding wisdom for something, I get all wrapped up in myself. I get all wrapped up in my brain, and I, and I can't figure out what to do. And the scripture tells me, well, Tony, it's actually pretty simple. That's why I was so encouraged by this word. So let, let's look at, I'm going to look at a, a, a number of different passages this morning, uh, two, three, maybe four, uh, and uh, look at how we can get wisdom for our journey. So James says this in the chapter one of his epistle, but if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives to all generously and without reproach, without holding back, and it will be given to him. But he must ask in faith without any doubting, for the one who doubts is like the surf of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. So, so James is saying some pretty simple things to us. So whether it's you're praying as a church, or whether you're praying as an individual for the journey that you're on in life, uh, which exit to take, what road to go down there, we got a nice picture of a road on that journey there. How do we find that wisdom? Well, James says, just ask for it. Just ask for it. This is one of those, isn't Tony deep? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I need wisdom. What should I do? Ask for it, you idiot. <laughs> just ask God. Because, because not only will he give it, he gives it freely. He gives it freely. I need wisdom for my life. You need wisdom for your life. We need wisdom as a church. We need to ask God for wisdom. It's, it's that deep and not so deep, you know? And then he goes on to say, he, he says he gives it freely because he, I think it, it, one of the ways we could say it is the person you're asking is the most generous person that exists. Yeah. The person you're asking is the most generous person that exists. So, so James goes on to say this. He, he, he said we should ask because God gives freely. He says, but we should ask in faith. He, says, he goes on to say, but he must ask in faith without any doubting, for the one who doubts is like the surf of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. You know, we ask in faith because if we don't, we get doubtful, and doubt confuses us. It makes you confused. It, the picture there is, is the being the, tossed around by the wind, the surf of the sea, driven and tossed around. You ever go in a rough seas and get bounced around by the rough seas? You know what that's like. And we were talking the other day about fishing, about being in the boat in the rough sea. And, you know, you'd hear you're looking at the, at the water, and here you're looking at the sky. And it's like, like that's confusing. <laughs> that confuses me. It's like, where can I run from this? You know? We get the idea, or maybe you don't. I get the idea sometimes that God wants us to stay stuck or wants me to stay stuck or wants me to be broken down or be lost. God doesn't want that at all. Um, this, when we say, what does it mean to, to ask in faith? What we're saying is ask believing that he's going to give it to you, that he wants to give it to you, you know, that he is the most generous person there is. Um, perhaps the most, uh, this is probably an overstatement, one of the ways we are misinformed about God is we have an idea that he wants to withhold from us. Um, that he's wait, you know, waiting to see us mess up so he can punish us or something. That's not who he is. He, he gives freely without reproach. He doesn't hold it back. You know? He's good and generous. And we have to ask in faith. Um, and so, so we have to ask, we have to ask in faith, and so we need to see that this is where our faith needs to be put in God's goodness and his generosity. So you're saying, okay, where are we going as a church? We're getting older as a church. What are we going to do? Let's ask God. Let's ask God. And ask in faith because you know what? God wants to show us. He's... <laughs> He's not like, oh, I'm going to let him wallow for a while. 
That's us just not asking. You know? And hey, I'm guilty of it. You know? So let's, let's look at this again from just a slightly different angle. Let's look at how Jesus says it. Jesus says this in, um, in uh, uh, I believe it's Matthew uh, 7, yes. Ask and you, it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. You know? What Jesus is talking about is persistence. So we should ask, we should ask in faith, and we should ask with some kind of persistence. We could read these verses this way. Uh, ask and keep asking, and it will be given to you. Seek and keep seeking, and you will find. Oops. Knock and keep knocking, and it will be open to you. See, Jesus then goes on to explain to us something. He says, so James says us to ask and ask in faith because God is generous. Jesus comes and says, ask, seek, and knock, and keep doing it. You know, we, we put that and keep knocking because that's the, the verb tense there. It's stay at it, stay at it. And he, here's how Jesus unpacks it. He says this, What manna is there among you who, when his son asks for a loaf, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, he will not give him a snake, will he? And you know, that's rhetorical. Of course not. Of course not. If you then, being evil, you know, even if we want to pretty that up, if you being not God <laughs> know how to give good gifts to your children, how much will you, more will your hev- Father who is in heaven give what is good to those who ask him? But James says that he's generous and doesn't withhold. Jesus says it this way, he is so good. And if you ask him, if you go after him for something, and if you're asking for what he wants you to have, he's, you're going to have it. You know? If you're going to seek and keep seeking, if you're going to knock and keep knocking, it'll be open to you. Jesus is trying to tell us, this is who he is. Your father is good. And you wouldn't do that to your children. Why would he, who is perfect, completely generous, and completely good, withhold from his children? He won't do that. In fact, in Luke, this same passage in Luke is very interesting. He says, uh, be, pre- previous to it, he says in Luke 11, he says, suppose one of you has a friend and goes at midnight and says to him, friend, lend me three loaves for a friend of mine who's come from a journey and I have nothing to set before him. And from inside, he answers you and says, do not bother me. The door's already been shut. My children and I are in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you that even though he will not get, get up and give you anything because he is a friend, because of your persistence, he will get up and give you as much as you need. If you stay at And in Luke it says, so then I say to you, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it will be open to you. Again, it's the same comparison. If people who aren't good, like God is good, will give to those who are persistent, how much more God who is perfectly good So we need to ask, and we need to ask in faith. We need to ask with persistence. We have to go after God. And that faith is that he is generous, and he is good. We should be, that's what we should be expecting. How would a good God withhold from us what we need as individuals or as a church to walk in our pursuit of him? He wouldn't. He wouldn't. I believe in one place it says he he wouldn't withhold the Holy Spirit from those who ask. So God, God is generous, and God is good. So let me just go over that again. We should ask, we should ask in faith. We should ask persistently. Um, and Jesus is probably implying this next one. I'll show you a little bit more about it, but I, I think we should ask with fervor. And what I mean by that is that we need to communicate in our asking, seeking, and knocking, 
for wisdom, for guidance, for, for the path ahead of us, we need, to sh we need to do it with a heart that really wants it. Now you think, well, being persistent would do that. But I think, I think there's a little bit more to it here. So what we're telling you, if you saw my video uh, that I sent out a, a week or so ago, I said, you know, we, we want to set aside next month of June, which starts Tuesday, um, to pray and fast for our future as a church. Uh, we want to ask God to show us this. Um, and I'm not going to do a teaching on fasting today, but fasting says something. It says something about who you are. It's, it's the heart, it can be the heart attitude. I, this is my favorite, my favorite verse about fasting. This is Job 23. Job is saying, I have not departed from the command of his lips. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. You see, when you, felt, when you fast, you're telling God, I love to eat, I need to eat, Lord, but I need to hear from you more. In fact, fasting has a way of reminding you of that. You know, tomorrow I got a number of things to do around the house. Rich and I are going to do some work on the internet here. We got, we got all kinds, we got a full day, right? If I have a full list of tasks in my brain for the next day, I can get up that next day and get going, and it might be two, three, even four o'clock in the afternoon before I realize I haven't eaten a thing. I had a cup of coffee and maybe a glass of water. But if tonight I say, you know what, tomorrow I'm going to fast because I want to hear what God's got to say to me, I will wake up so hungry. <laughs> I'll wake up dreaming. My, my last dream will be about a big stack of pancakes and bacon or something. It's like, wait a minute. I, I, I go without eating all the time. But there's something about deciding that you're going to put aside your food and say, God, I want to hear your voice. That's powerful. Fasting doesn't earn you anything. It's not points with God. Oh, well, i got to give him what he, he wants now because he didn't eat this morning. No. What we're saying is there's a motive behind fasting. And it's to say to God, I need to hear from you. I want to hear what you have to say to me. That's why you'll, find, you'll hear people say, well, I was going to make a life decision, so I went away for three days by myself and fasted and prayed. Uh, because you're really, you know, if you're going for three days, you're really praying hard because you want God to give you the answers. <laughs> you can stop things so you can eat. I like food. You like food, you know. And we're not asking you to fast the whole month of June. But if you do, I'll be impressed, you know. You can choose a day a week. You can choose a group of days. You can partner with somebody else and say, hey, Every Tuesday, let's pray together. Or these two days, let's fast and pray together. You can do anything. What we want you to do is, is put your heart toward asking God for wisdom for this church, for wisdom for our lives, and get that answer from God. So you can plan with others and, and go from there. So let me see. I have some more things. So we're going to have to ask, ask of faith, as persistently, as with fervor. And where do we want to end up? Well, we want to expect God's clarity. What, I, what I'm asking God for is clarity. There are so many, you know, we live in this world of opportunity, right? Of choices. Um, you get the same thing from 12 different places and different deals and that sort of thing, you know. You know, you go to buy a car and there's brands and styles and models and all of that thing. Um, and sometimes all the choices we have make it harder to make a choice. What if I choose this one and it's not that? So what we want from God is clarity. Clarity, which gives us a clear picture of what to do. And then, then we can walk in it. That doesn't mean that once we get clarity from God and we walk in it, there won't be hiccups or challenges or anything like that it means that we'll have clarity and say, this is what God told us to do. Um, 
And that's where, the, where we want to end up is, um, well, you know in Acts 15, Acts 15 is where Paul and, and Barnabas are confronted by the, what they call the Judaizers, the other Christians who came in and said, well, these Gentiles are getting saved, but to really be Christians, they need to keep the law of Moses and get circumcised. And think of yourself as an adult male, and you think your life's just changed because you gave your life to Jesus, and somebody comes and tells you, oh, one other thing. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> just one other thing. <laughs> we got a moil over here given a discount. So they said, no, 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 we're not going to put the law on these people. So they, they went to Jerusalem and went with Peter and James and all the, uh, the apostles there uh, looking to settle the matter, to get clarity on what to do. And the, the decision was that, no, you don't have to ask them to do that. And it, it was so great the way, it, in fact, we were talking about this the other day, so great the way it, it came out. It says, for it seemed good to, uh, to, good to the Holy Spirit and to us that we not put this burden on the Gentile Christians. That's where we want to end up. So we can say, this is the clarity we're getting from God. It seems good to the Holy Spirit and to us that we proceed this way. That's what we're asking God for. That's what we're expecting God to do. As we pray and fast, we're going to be looking for God's answers. You'll be getting an email either tonight or tomorrow sometime, just going over some of this stuff again. And I'll, I'll try to give you some, some points to focus on in your prayer. We'll probably be adding some more Zoom prayer meetings, but if you, a couple of you want to come here and pray, or meet here and pray, pray. Meet at each other's houses, pray. Um, let's make June that. You, fast. You can, if you can't fast full days, fast partial days. Give up something you really love. Put it aside. So every time you want to have that thing you love, of course I'm not talking about coffee. You know, <laughs> um, well, not for me anyway. <laughs> but maybe it should be. But every time you want to have that thing you love, You'll think, ah, oh, I want to pray now. I want to pray now. We've asked, um, we don't have the dates yet, but we've asked uh, uh, the team from City of Hope in Kearney. They're going to come down. We're going to have a couple of special Friday nights where we just meet and worship together and beseech the Lord together as a congregation. Um, they've offered to help us with that and really uh, support us in that. I'll be going to the rest. I've been, been to one of the life group meetings. I'll be visiting this week two of them and one the week after the other life group meetings and just sharing the things, the different opportunities, the different off-ramps that we think are in front of us or different uh, forks in the road that are, are in front of us and which path is wisest for us. What is God saying here? Um, and, and give us wisdom with that. And then we plan, because we expect God to give us clarity, we're planning that the last Sunday in June, the 27th, after the service that day, we're going to have a, a picnic here together and celebrate God's speaking to us and speaking and guiding us in this. That doesn't mean all the details will be wrapped up, but we really believe that God's going to speak to us this month and give us clarity and wisdom. Amen? Amen. So I ask that you would, uh, you would take this seriously and encourage one another, encourage one another to, to invest in this. Uh, folks that aren't here, folks, that, if you know someone that doesn't attend a life group meeting, invite them to your life group meeting. Um, if you have you know, I had one life group meeting and the questions I got back were great. I met with the deacons and shared a number of things and got wonderful feedback. That's so helpful as I hear you tell me what you hear God saying. And together we'll, we'll be able to hear the mind of Christ together for this. So we're, we're believing for this and we ask that you would invest this time, invest yourself in praying and fasting for the month of June that we can find wisdom 
for our journey as we continue on together as believers. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's stand together. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I pray this morning for this congregation, for this church, Lord. I pray for for the leaders here, Lord, that we would hear your voice, God, and we would have clarity, Lord, that we could lead the congregation. But I pray for I, I pray for every member and every everyone who calls Long Branch Covenant Church their spiritual home, Lord, their spiritual family, Lord, that together we would hear your voice and we would journey and we'd be effective, Lord, uh, that we would be able to put our hand to the things you have for us as we journey on. Yes, Lord, many of us are older, but we still have so much to give and we have so much to pass on to others, Lord. Lord, bring that generation to us. Send us to that generation. However you want to do it, give us a place to give what you've given to us, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the encouragement we received this morning from Josh. And Lord, we, that spoke to our hearts that, that we can take what we have and give it to others, Lord. And we want to encourage everyone who we have contact with, everyone who we have relationship with, Lord, that, that God will be faithful in their lives as he has been in our lives. But we trust you for this month of June. We trust you to speak to us, Lord, and give us clarity Give us wisdom for the journey. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.